Hi, I'm Dr. Addie Wyman Vitalin, and I'm so excited to be here with you all today. Sad, of course, that we couldn't be in person, but excited to be able to share work in this way. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and get started. So I'm here today to talk about birth mothers who are now in a role as birth grandmothers in families that have an open adoption arrangement. So adoption has evolved dramatically over the past 100 years, specifically in terms of increased openness within adoptions, um, where there's contact between the birth family and the adoptee and the adoptive family. So today, adoption is still very common. Over two-thirds of folks in the United States report that they have some type of personal connection to adoption. There's been a lot of policy advocacy to help adoptees be able to access their birth records. There was even a change in policy this past January 2020 with adoptees being able to access birth records more easily. So a lot of changes still happening with the majority of families within the adoptive kin network being having some form of openness, whether that be long distance communication or a fully open adoption where they see the family members in person. So birth mother has a very unique role as a grandmother. We often think of the birth mother role as stigmatized, although that is lessening, there's still many stereotypes that exist for birth mothers. That being said, more and more research has been working to dismantle these stereotypes and really address what's happening for families and the experiences that they're having. We also know that the grandparent role provides many reciprocal benefits, both for the grandchild and for the grandparent. So this can include social emotional benefits, um, a sense of fulfillment and meaning for the grandparent, and also even material benefits. Sometimes grandparents will help out a family financially paying for college or in other financial ways. So really a lot of benefits that we have from grandparent relationships and from the birth mother than in a role as a grandmother. Now, families have really different types of contact and that really depends on the adult adoptee. So when we think about the birth grandmother, we're thinking about a birth mother who has placed their child for adoption, who has now grown up and has a child of their own. And that adoptive parent in the middle I mean, the adult adoptee who's a parent, they're really going to determine the amount of contact that the grandmother and the grandchild have with each other. And this really matters based on the level of openness within the adoption family. Technology and social media are huge components of how this communication is happening, how the relationships are growing. And what we're seeing is that grandparents are using social media a lot. They're on Facebook, they're texting, they're using FaceTime, while also still including traditional methods of communication, having a phone call, writing a letter, sending a card on a holiday. So this study drew upon social role theory, really this idea of reciprocal relationships that all of us hold multiple roles simultaneously. So we have the birth mother right there in the middle as the grandmother. Um, so she has her adoptive child who's now an adult, the grandchild for these families, and then also the roles and expectations that exist for those roles within society. So we might think of what we all think of when we think of a grandmother, maybe providing caregiving, helping the parents out, um, taking the grandchild on social activities and events, teaching them skills, being in communication, talking on the phone. Um, and so really thinking about how does society's expectations fit in with what it means to be a birth mother where there's often not clearly defined roles, expectations may differ depending on the person and, and what they hope for the relationship to look like. So we really were asking what types of contact and communication are happening between the birth grandmother and the grandchildren? Is there even communication happening? Has the birth mother met their grandchild? 
are they helping out with child care? What, what level of involvement do they have with a child's life? What role does technology play? How are they communicating, if at all? And how are they feeling about it? How satisfied are the birth mothers? And how does the addition of a grandchild possibly shift the dynamics of the relationship they have with their own child? So this research was drawn from the MTARP, Minnesota, Texas Adoption Research Project, which has been going on for over 30 years, beginning in the early 1980s and continuing today. This subsample is from the most recent wave of data, and it involves 11 birth mothers whose, adoptive, whose children who were adopted have now grown up and have children of their own. So very small sample, but really looking at an area that hasn't had much exploration before. It's a very homogenous sample, majority white, um, Christian, middle class, pretty homogenous sample. And that really was designed to help explore openness and an impact that that had. So really what we're seeing, as I mentioned, is that communication is happening. The majority of families are using a combination of traditional and tech-mediated contact. So they're having in-person visits, and this is also paired with sending cards on birthdays, texting, liking a photo on Facebook, really using a whole different combination of ways to stay in touch. And what we found is that the adult adoptee, as I mentioned, their role really matters. In many ways, they're the gatekeepers to if the birth mother is going to be in communication with a child, if they're able to see them. So some of the adult adoptees actually reached out to their birth mothers and said, hey, I'm having a hard time with childcare. You live locally. Can you help provide support along with my adoptive parents who maybe are helping out with caregiving too? Or they chose to send baby photos or other types of communication with them. Also, one thing that's notable about our sample is because of the age of the adult adoptees, the grandchildren were pretty young. The majority of them were under five years old. So really not yet at an age where that communication is going to happen independently. Um, a three-year-old isn't gonna say, hey, let me call my grandparent. Although with a recent uptick in technology, that may be changing over time. But within the past few years, we really haven't seen that. And certainly a number of the grandchildren were still babies at this time. So really thinking about the complexity within the relationship between the adult adoptee and their birth mother. So we really found that knowing the many benefits that grandparents have, if there can be a safe and positive relationship with the birth grandmother, and then that might parallel some of the benefits that we're seeing in non-adoptive families, that this is something that really should be encouraged. Um, also, we found that the milestone event of becoming a parent sometimes contributed to a shift. The adult adoptee then had the perspective of what it meant to be a parent and to take on that responsibility and perhaps led to some understanding of what it was like for their birth parents. Um, and so we found, again, very small sample, but we found that this help generally helps strengthen the relationship. It's not easy. There's a lot of complexity. There's a lot of communication that needs to happen. We definitely heard from the birth mothers that sometimes there was maybe some friction with the adoptive mother. Um, and then at the same time, we also heard that some really great conversations came from this and, and helped develop the relationship between the adoptive parents and the birth mother. So really potential there too for some strengthening of family relationships. Also, similar to what we're seeing in non-adoptive families, technology, an increase in technology is playing a huge role in family communication, especially when folks don't live in the same areas. We had a number who lived in different regions, out of state, and so they're the ones really relying on technology to help fill the gap between visits. We heard that a lot. And so many of the birth mothers said, hey, we'd rather have a FaceTime call if we can't see them in person. And we'll take that. Of course, we prefer in-person visits, but we'll take that tech-mediated contact as we can. 
So thinking about moving forward, definitely important for social workers, therapists, school psychologists, primary care providers to be considering this broader network when we're looking at a child and what kind of supports and who can really be on their team. We really should look kind of beyond the immediate family into the broader extended family about who might be available to help out provide additional support within the family network. Also encouraging tech mediated contact and again, that the birth mother perspective is important. This is often a voice we don't hear within adoption conversations. So really keeping in mind what, what those experiences are. Of course, we would love to hear the birth father perspective too. This was a, a very small homogenous sample. So would be great moving forward to hear what a, a more diverse group is experiencing over time. All right, that's it. Thanks so much.